Throughout this week, I've been learning about a very inspiring saint. Her name is Blessed Chiara Badano. She was born in 1971 in Italy, and Chiara was Miss Popular growing up. Everyone loved to hang around this girl. She was not only very, very attractive, as you could see online, but she was very joyful and just fun to be around. She loved to sing out loud to pop music with her friends. She was a very sporty girl. She loved playing tennis, swimming, and hiking in the mountains. And Kiara had dreams one day of becoming an airline stewardess. At the same time, Kiara was very, very Catholic. Everyone knew that Kiara was so open about her Catholic faith. When she was 16, she had this real encounter with Jesus on a retreat, and she decided at that moment she was going to give her life to Jesus. She was going to live for God. And so Kiara was just so open and joyful about her Catholic faith, praying in public, going to daily Mass, and just being joyful about her identity as a Catholic. So on the surface, everything seemed to be going so well for Kiara, until one day, in the summer in 1988, at the age of 17, Kiara was playing tennis one day, and she experienced a sharp pain in her shoulder. Her parents didn't think much of it, but they thought we might as well bring Kiara to the hospital to get it checked out. And to their utter shock, Kiara was diagnosed with osteogenic sarcoma, which some of you might know is a rare and aggressive form of bone cancer and it was already rapidly spreading throughout her body. So Kiara was given only a couple of years to live. What would you do if you were Kiara? What would you say? You're 17 years old, you're a senior in high school, you think you have the whole world ahead of you, and you've just been diagnosed with fatal bone cancer. What would you say? Well, here's what Kiara did. Here's what she said. And this is why she is so inspiring today. Kiara decided to offer up all of her sufferings to Jesus. Family and friends remember Kiara as she went through chemotherapy, holding her beautiful brown hair that was falling out and looking up to heaven and saying, I offer this for you, Jesus. And every new pain and suffering that she went through, people remember her saying out loud again, I offer this for you, Jesus. Kiara even refused morphine treatment because she wanted to be awake when all of the friends and family would visit her to encourage them. And so the pain that she felt from not having morphine, she would say, I offer this for you, Jesus. Just before her 19th birthday, Kiara received anointing of the sick in Holy Communion, and she died on October 7th, 1990. And there were over 2,000 people that went to her funeral, and she continues to inspire thousands of people throughout the world because of her response to suffering. She offered up all of her sufferings to Jesus. And out of all the lessons that we could get from Kiara, the one I find most inspiring, just that visual of going through chemotherapy treatment and taking her beautiful brown hair and with eyes raised to heaven saying, I offer this for you, Jesus. Maybe you've heard about the Catholic saying, like, offer it up. I know for myself growing up, whenever... I would hear my mom say that to me. I, th I thought it was just like the Catholic version of suck it up, buttercup, you know? So it's like, I don't want to do my math homework, mom. She would say, offer it up, Richard. Or mom, I don't want to eat broccoli. Offer it up. But actually, offer it up and suck it up are almost opposite responses to suffering. Suck it up was Peter's response in today's gospel. Peter saw suffering as meaningless, something to be avoided, and so he wanted to get rid of it in his own life and in the life of Jesus. But what did Jesus say in response to Peter's idea? 
not having any of it. Peter, Jesus said to Peter, get behind me, Satan, for you are thinking not as God does, but as humans do. So Peter had this human way of thinking towards suffering. Suffering's meaningless, suffering's pointless, avoid it at all costs. But in, res- in response to Peter, what did Jesus do? Jesus offered up his suffering. And the fact of Jesus' life is that Jesus offered up all of his sufferings through his passion, death, and resurrection. And by offering up his sufferings, he transformed suffering forever from something meaningless into something meaningful. We know that by Jesus offering up his sufferings, which is why we have a crucifix, Jesus offered up all of the sufferings in his body And it was very meaningful. The salvation of the world took place. And then what did Jesus do in today's gospel? He invited all of his disciples to take part in offering up their sufferings. That's what Jesus did. He invited whoever wants to become my follower, let him deny himself, take up his cross, follow me, lose their life for my sake. Jesus was inviting all of his disciples to continue this work of offering up suffering for the salvation of the world. And Blessed Chiara is one who accepted the invitation. And with every pain and suffering, what did she say? I offer this for you, Jesus. And family and friends and even medical staff report about how transformative it was to see Kiara put so much meaning into the suffering that she was going through. One of the the doctors, this is what he said, talking about Kiara, this doctor said, through her smile, through her eyes full of light, she showed us that death doesn't exist. Only life exists. Imagine that. If you go online, you type in Blessed Chiara Badano, you'll see this girl, hair falling out, full of joy, full of light, full of life. In the midst of horrible suffering, she experienced how Jesus can transform it into something meaningful. And like Chiara, Jesus wants us to accept the invitation as well, to offer up our sufferings for Jesus. So if you're baptized, you're part of the body of Christ. We've heard about this often growing up. We're part of the body of Christ. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means that Jesus lives in your very body. So if you offer up the sufferings that you go through, you can actually participate in Jesus' work of redeeming the world. This should be amazing news for us. That because we're the body of Christ, our suffering actually has value. It's not meaningless. We don't have to suck it up. We can offer it up to Jesus. And if we do so, we can experience the transformative effects of it in our lives, like Blessed Chiara. Okay, so what does this look like? Any form of suffering, absolutely anything in your life, whether big or small, you can offer it up to Jesus. For example, say you were to wake up this morning to your alarm and you're feeling tired and you want to press snooze and you go back to bed. That's what you want to do. But then you remember that suffering actually has meaning. And so you say, I offer this for you, Jesus, and you get out of bed. Or tomorrow, you're driving back home from work, say it's raining, heavy traffic, bad day at work, and someone cuts in front of you, and you think about doing something, but then you remember, oh, yeah, suffering actually has meaning if I give it to Jesus. And so you say, I offer this for you, Jesus. Or some of these boys say they have homework, you know, and they're playing video games and mom's calling them, stop playing video games, get your homework done, and they really want to play video games instead of homework, and they experience the suffering of that, because that is. Video games are way 
more fun than doing homework. But then they remember, oh yeah, my suffering, because I'm part of the body of Christ, has meaning. And so they say, I offer this for you, Jesus. They put down the controller, and they get to work. Or it's late at night, you're tired, you want to go to bed, you remember, oh yeah, I've committed to saying prayers before I go to bed. You think about going on your phone, on Instagram, scrolling through until you fall asleep, but then you remember, oh yeah, suffering, if I give it to Jesus, has meaning. And so you say, I offer this for you, Jesus. And you get down on your knees and you pray before you fall asleep. My brothers and sisters, God did not come into this world to take away suffering. Listen to this. God did not come into this world to take away suffering. He came to transform suffering. That's what we see on the cross. Suffering transformed into the redemption of the world. And God does not want to come into your life to take away your suffering either. That's only going to happen in heaven. Until then, we have the opportunity to offer up our sufferings to Jesus. He'll take care of it. As far as the benefits of it, leave it up to Jesus. He knows what to do. He's a pretty smart guy. Until then, any form of suffering you experience, anything, like some of the people here in church that are old and just full of pain, the suffering that you have going on is so valuable, so valuable. Your life is not a waste in any way. You are, being, you are like the Marines for Jesus. You have the most power in your body right now to offer up for the salvation of the world, to continue Jesus' work of redemption. And so let's be inspired by Blessed Chiara. And any time we experience suffering, I offer this up for you, Jesus.